I'm Lauren Yee, and I've studied design and psychology, run a small business, worked in education management for around a decade, and helped teams at Fortune 500 companies work towards creating more psychologically safe work environments for their teams. Through all of these experiences, I have realized and been reminded time and again, the benefits to adulting like a kid. One of the best ways that I think that we can do that is by cultivating curiosity. If you can do that, you can have a fuller life for yourself, have more meaningful relationships with others and engage more deeply with the world around you. With practice, you can feel more comfortable with uncertainty. So what is curiosity? It is the desire to understand and also being okay with whatever the answers are on the other side. It requires your interest. It's not necessarily fun and can be kind of scary sometimes, but it's also this magical space where we own not knowing. When we're kids, and when I say kids, I mean around age 10 or under, we don't know anything. We're absorbing information like sponges. We're learning new things all the time. Everything's new to us. We go through phases where we ask why. That's because we're trying to define terms, build a framework around the world to understand everything. And the world is confusing. For example, if my pet fish died, is that the same or different from when my parents' phone died? There's also the idea of imagination, it's possibilities, it's all of, all of those creative moments. Uh, we play superheroes, like that tree is a castle, the floor is lava, everything is possible at that age. There's also an excitement to learning. We are trying to make sense of the world, but we're excited about it. There's a six-year-old that I know right now who every, pretty much every other sentence starts with, did you know, fill in the blank. As time goes on and we become adults, those frameworks get more rigid. There are rules, things are black and white. There's peer pressure, things are popular or cool. Suddenly our ideas and imagination and things that we come up with are wrong. There is a great book and streaming series called Babysitter's Club. And there's a story in it where a teacher asks their classroom to draw self portraits. Most of the class does a sort of human shaped version of themselves. And one character named Claudia draws a butterfly. She gets in trouble with the teacher because she didn't follow the assignment, she did it wrong. This doesn't only happen in movies and TV shows and books though. I even remember writing a poetry essay and I got a D because I interpreted the poem wrong. I had the wrong meaning. We learn and get practiced in not pursuing curiosity and asking questions and wanting to learn because there's just the right answer and that's the way it is. We don't like the idea that we're going to look foolish or ignorant. It's uncomfortable and it becomes too vulnerable to lean into curiosity. Suddenly we're adults. We're supposed to know everything, have all the right answers, make good choices. Generally we do because of experience, but also there's no room for error. So how can we get back to that? We've been we've practiced out of it, but luckily we can practice back into it. When we do that though, it's good to know your enemy and we need to know what gets in the way. Just like anything, time is a factor. We're all busy. There's families and pets and jobs and housework and attempted social lives in all of this. And luckily for us, because curiosity is a practice that you can cultivate and hone, it's not anything that you necessarily have to put extra time into. It's something that you can practice as you go through your regular day. It's something that you can draw on and lean into. Also, there's the idea of embarrassment or shame. It's a little bit of a mindset shift, 
But if you own that it's for you, you're learning. It's about your desire to learn and understand. It doesn't really matter <laughs> for other people. You're owning that you don't know. You're owning that you want to grow. And there's nothing wrong with that. Anything that you have experienced or not, or have knowledge of or not, is valid. We're all different people, and there's no shame in that. We're all just trying to get better. Okay, so curiosity is about questions and wonder. You gotta ask more questions. You don't know what you don't know, but you also won't know what you if you don't ask. So start getting practice in asking questions. Also, just like so many other things, it's important to be able to lead by example. If you can own a space and create a space where you're saying, I'm okay with this, you give other people permission to do the same. So let's start with yourself. There are three things that we can talk about for how you individually can try to lean into more curiosity. It's about an interest and a desire to understand and learn. So what are you interested in? Maybe there's something you've always wanted to do since you were a kid, but you haven't had time or didn't have resources and weren't really sure. Uh, maybe you wanted to try a new dance, uh, like ballet or tap, uh, hip hop. Maybe there's something that you're already interested in as an adult. Maybe you've wanted to learn coding or a new language. It doesn't have to be that active. It could be something else as well. But we are also, as adults, so practiced in the daily grind and routine that maybe we don't know what our interests are. I like to draw on this, what I like to reference as the seven wonders of curiosity. And the first six might be ones that you probably have heard of. There's who, what, when, where, why, and how. But I had a seventh one that's I reference as, huh, interesting. And the reason for that is because not everything is so obvious. Not everything has an exact answer. And maybe you're going about your day and you hear something on the radio and you just go, what did they say? You perk up and you are interested, but you don't know why, or it caught your attention for some reason, but you don't know what to ask. And you just need to kind of figure out knowing more. I like to think of it as our kid inside of us that's waving our arms saying, pay attention to that. It's about your interests, so lean into that. Once you do figure out what you're interested in, use that to your advantage to connect with others around you. When we're kids, you can just dive into a playground and just start playing and running around with other kids. There's not really any introduction. You just are there and having a good time. As adults, there's a little bit more structure and we need to be a little bit more intentional with how we do that. One of the ways that this sometimes happens when there's social gatherings and uh, networking events is there's icebreakers. And not to say that icebreakers are bad, but I know that they often get a lot of groans or eye rolls because it's a forced learning situation for others. It's not necessarily something that you yourself are interested in. So once we get past the normal introductions of what's your name, where are you from? What do you do for a living? lean into what you're interested in, find a way to connect. Maybe they're wearing an article of clothing of a musical artist that you really like, comment on that. Maybe you see something kind of interesting in the background of a video call that you wanna know about. You can also lean into your own interests. I really like food. So maybe I'm gonna ask somebody, hey, have you tried any new restaurants lately? What about new recipes? Do you have a favorite for this weather? Those are things that will keep you engaged and you're learning with your interest about the other people. And it's a more meaningful connection than just the surface level things that we're so used to. Lastly, it's uncomfortable, but practice uncertainty and being in that unknown space. One way that you can think about this or like concrete way that you can figure out what that means is ask yourself, when was the last time you did something for the first time? It's kind of hard to answer sometimes. As kids, this might be happening every day, every other day, at least every week, because things, everything's new. But again, as an adult, we get into routine, get up, go to work, feed ourselves and others, go to bed, <laughs> sleep, shower, exercise. It's, it all gets very 
practiced and we got to get out of that so that we can grow. So it is a practice and everything counts. So start small. It doesn't have to be a huge thing that you make it a point to do. It can be if you're excited about it, but if not, maybe it's just the next time you decide to do takeout, try a new restaurant or a new type of food. Maybe you, a friend is talking about a different kind of music that you've never listened to and actively ask them what maybe some artists or bands that you would be worth checking out. Maybe the next time it's time to spend some time with friends or family, you're going to decide to play a new game or sport that no, nobody has experience with. It's practice in not knowing and learning and making mistakes and doing things wrong and it's fine and if we can practice that we'll get more comfortable with it as time goes on okay now that we're pros at this what can we do with others or maybe in the workplace a really important factor with other people is combating that shame if you can create a space where people know that they can not know and make mistakes and it's okay you create a space where people are comfortable and safe and can flourish in that without backing away and stagnating their growth and yours as a group there's this really great scene from a movie called sister act two and in it Whoopi goldberg is a music high school music teacher and they're creating a choir and so in order to place people in the different parts of the choir, they are doing mini auditions with each, all of the students. And they're singing like the first line of Mary had a little lamb. A couple students go through this and then they get to, I believe Maria. And Maria gets really shy and she doesn't want to sing. And with a little bit more pressing, like you just need to sing a line, it's no big deal. She quietly admits, I don't know that song. Of course, other high school students start giggling and making fun of her and Whoopi's character stops it in its tracks. It says, we don't need to shame Maria for not knowing Mary had a little lamb. Maybe for all we know, where Maria grew up, Mary had a dog or maybe a little brother. Making it a safe space to not know or validating people's experiences being different than yours is so important. Also, when you're working with others, oftentimes things can come up when there's a problem or an issue. Lean into curiosity and decide if you want to understand or be right. It's about a lecture versus a discussion. If you're in a space where you're trying to figure out who to blame, who was at fault, and be right, that doesn't really solve anything. That's in the past. It is what it is. You can't change that. But if you lean into curiosity, it's a forward thinking thing. And you can figure out what happened to get us here. What can we learn? How can we move forward? And yes, there's accountability and all that as well. But it's it's about moving forward and learning and understanding and how to progress. And if you make it okay to make certain levels of mistakes uh, or not know or not realize the resources that somebody had, you can teach them. People are much more willing when it's a discussion versus being shamed and scolded and lectured that something they did was wrong. Okay, maybe something they did was wrong, but what are we gonna do about it moving forward? Lastly, I would also encourage you to seek other perspective, perspectives and understand people, even when there isn't a problem. We all have our own experiences and regardless of age, experience, background, whoever you are, we all bring different skills and knowledge to the table. And every single person you meet knows more about something than you do. I'm intelligent, but so are you. There was a time when I was working in education management and we were doing a training and practicing building some new projects for what we were going to teach students. And one of my staff members built a elevator project and there was a lever, the elevator goes up and down. And after they built it, they started sliding and smashing the lever into the side of the elevator wall. 
And rather than just brushing it off as, that's weird, I decided to ask a question. And I asked them, what are you doing? I just wanted to understand. And he told me, I know that a kid is gonna try this in class. So I wanna figure out how it's gonna fail, if it's gonna fail, maybe a way to build it better, either originally or afterwards, so it's a teaching moment, but it's gonna help me manage the kids better. I hadn't thought about that at the time. So I said, great, keep doing what you're doing. Let me know what you find out. Their learning helps me learn and we can all grow from figuring out why people do the things they do uh, in a, from a form of understanding. If you can create these spaces for people to make mistakes and fail and ask questions and not understand and not know, but also learn, these groups will flourish. They'll be creative, they can adapt, they're innovative, and they have resilience and they're excited when, when there are changes or challenges or unknowns come up. They don't get derailed and it's, it's, a new, it's a new exciting place to be. Remember that there's no discomfort in not knowing things when you're a kid. And there's so much discomfort once we become adults when we don't know we're wrong, we make a mistake. But it doesn't have to be that way. I want to encourage you to try to get back to that space of joy and owning that you don't know and the excitement of wanting to learn. If you can do that, you can open up so many more opportunities rather than closing yourself into certainty and comfort. There's no growth without discomfort. So stay curious and don't forget, practice makes progress. We're all still learning and growing. So give yourself and others space and grace to do that.